I'm Arpad, and this video is going to be about table saw basics. Let's get started. So I'm going to start off by just basically explaining the basics of a table saw. A table saw is a big table with a circular saw blade that rises up and you could primarily use it for ripping stuff but also cross cutting stuff. It is a very versatile machine. The saw that I have here is the Saw Stop 3 horsepower professional cabinet saw. You don't need to have a big saw like this but it is really nice to have especially when you're working more continuously and pursue this as more than just a hobby. This is a really great saw to have, but you don't need to have a huge cabinet saw like this. You can have a job site table saw like this, which is more portable and more affordable, can collapse and easily unfold and be used for most weekend warriors. However, today I'm gonna to be demonstrating everything on the big saw stop table saw as it's more accurate and I'm more familiar with the big saw stop. So let's get into the basics. So let's start off with the table saw anatomy. This is the table saw top. It is basically why the table saw is named the table saw because it has a really big top like this. This one is made of cast iron, but more job site saws are made out of aluminum. However, I find that the cast iron ones are much more rugged, a lot more heavy, and a lot flatter. There's a lot going on in the middle here. This is the table saw blade. This is where the cutting action happens. The blade will spin and you will pass your wood through it and it will cut the wood. Right behind here is the splitter or the riving knife. This prevents the wood from binding against the back of the blade and kicking back. In my opinion, it is the single most important safety feature on a table saw. I will always use the table saw with a riving knife in place. And what is attached to the riving knife is the blade guard. There are certain instances where you'll have to take it off, but in most cases, I'd leave it on. It is a great safety feature to prevent wood from dropping on the blade. This one adds dust collection, so it's a little bit cleaner. And also it acts as a little bit of a safety, so that way your hands won't get near the blade. This right here is the rip fence. This is parallel to the blade. The rip fence will slide, and you could put it as close to the blade as you want or as far away as your table saw will allow. And that way you can cut whatever width you need. Never freehand on a table saw. Always use the rip fence for making rip cuts. This is a miter gauge. The miter gauge will run in the miter slot. This one's a nice aftermarket one that is much better than the ones that the saws come with. It runs in the slot. There should be no play. And you can use that to cross cut wood as well as use the positive stops to cut angles on the, on the wood as well. So you can set it to 45 degrees and make miter cuts with this as well. So moving down towards the bottom part of the saw, we have some more functions here. This is the on off switch. This is commonly a big red button on almost all table saws. It's located near the left side of the saw, unless you have a really old saw, then it's located towards the right. It's usually located towards the left on all of the newer saws. This is the blade crank. This will allow you to adjust the height of the blade so you can adjust it higher or lower depending on the thickness of material that you're cutting. And right off to the side of the blade crank, we have the blade tilt. This is another crank on the side of the blade that will control the tilt of the blade. So you can have it either 90 degrees or you can adjust the angle depending on what, what kind of cut you wanna make. Now, like I said, I usually recommend using the blade guard. It keeps you safe and it works really and it also helps with dust collection. But for this video, I will remove the blade guard so that way the visual clarity is a little bit better and you can see what's going on a little bit easier with the cutting. However, I will install a riving knife into the saw as that is the most important safety feature to prevent the wood from binding against the blade. The riving knife should be used all the time unless you're using a dado stack. When using a table saw, you'll always want to wear eye protection. That is the most important, so that way sawdust and stuff coming towards you doesn't get in your eyes. 
On top of that, if you have a job site table saw or you have sensitive hearing, I would recommend hearing protection. This helps so that way you can, you can protect your hearing while you're using the saw. However, on a larger, more commercial grade saw like this one, the motors are really quiet and it's not really the most necessary. However, I do not advise you to not wear your hearing protection. It is always better to wear your hearing protection in the shop. So before I get into cutting a board and showing how to cut one, let's talk about push sticks. There are many different kinds of push sticks that you can use for a table saw. The most common kind being the simple push stick like this. These are generally okay for using a table saw, however, I would not recommend them. They only have a certain amount of the heel so if the board so it doesn't support the board very well. However, it is good if you're using them in pairs that we could push the board through the blade. However, because it's made out of such a brittle plastic, if it were to come in contact with the blade, plastic shrapnel would be flying everywhere. That's why I would not recommend these push sticks. Instead, I would recommend making a push stick like this, which has a really long heel and can support the wood really well through the blade. This means you could get the three directions of pressure on the board, downward, inward, and forward. This will give you all three directions of pressure so that way you can push the board really easily through the blade safely. And because it's made out of wood, the blade will cut into it no problem. For anything wide, I would recommend a push block like this. This is made out of a hardened plastic which can cut through the blade just fine. It has this grippy rubber on the bottom. And so if you're cutting anything wider than around five inches, you can use a push block to keep your hand safely away from the blade and this will give you a lot of control while gripping the board really well. And if you have the money, the micro jig gripper is a great buy because it allows you to have a blade guard and support the offcut and the workpiece side while maintaining the three directions of pressure. It's got that grippy stuff on the bottom. It's got a shoe which you can adjust and support even more sides of the, of the board while you're cutting. And it allows you to support the board while you're cutting it all the way through the cut. So to start using a table saw, I would start off by plugging it in and turning it on and off for a few times. That way you can get a sense of what the power is like of the saw even without cutting the wood. Just hearing the sound of it will let you know how much power it has. Get used to turning the saw on and off, especially with your knee to turn the saw off. Don't fear this power, but respect it. To start off making a rib cut, make sure your blade is set to the right height. It should be set to the valley of the, of the saw blade. This is called the gullet. That, that's how high you should set your saw blade. I want to get this board down to three and a quarter inches. So I will line up the ruler with three and a quarter, tap my fence if need be, and lock it in place. So after your fence is set and your blade is set, now you're ready to make your cut. One rule with a table saw, make sure you always stand to one side of the blade or the other. Never stand directly in the path of the blade. If the piece of wood were to kick back, you don't want to be in that path where it could kick back. Make sure you're always standing to one side of the blade. Now simply turn your saw on and gently feed your wood through the blade, making sure it has constant contact with the fence. I also use my push stick at the very end to guide the cut through, so that way I don't have to use my finger. My left hand will be pushing towards the fence, maintaining that sideways direction of pressure. Once the blade has stopped, you can take your pieces of wood and pick them up. First thing you want to do is make a mark on your board for how long you want to cut it. Let's say I want to cut it about two feet. You'll want to make a mark and draw a line straight with your speed square. Then you can line that up with the blade. I like to sight down the blade, that way I can see where my line is. Then pull your board back. Then it's just a matter of turning your saw on and gently pushing your wood through the blade.
Once again, you'll want to make sure the blade comes to a complete stop before grabbing your piece of wood. One thing you never want to do is use the miter gauge and the rip fence at the exact same time when making a cut. This will cause the piece of wood to get trapped between the blade and the fence and it could kick back. Instead, if you want to use the fence for making cuts and using it as a stop block, insert a piece of wood behind the fence. In this case, I will use the push stick. That way you can butt up your wood and make your cuts. The only exception is when you are making a non-through cut. This way, the off-cut end is still being supported by the fence and isn't getting trapped in between the blade. And that's it. Those are the basics of using a table saw. Learning how to make a rip cut and a cross cut. Other than that, that's all you need to know in terms of the basics. There are more advanced level stuff like jigs, which you can use to make circles and cross cuts and even other round stuff. Re awesome stuff on the table saw. But these are table saw basics. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next one.